Retro Nintendo consoles require a special bit in order to be able to get into them. So I'm using this G 4.5 bit out of my iFixit Protect Toolkit and this extender in order to be able to get down inside of here. It's just going to require four of those. Once those are out, we're done with this until we put it back together. that's off we can get our first look here it looks pretty dirty I'm gonna switch over to this Phillips one bit and that is what we'll use for the entire rest of this teardown Activate the opening trigger and that allows me to pull this mechanism out of here with the little spring on it. With that, now the lid is free. I want to squeeze in on these two little tabs and that'll pop the logo out and clean behind it. I want to squeeze these two tabs and that will allow me to release this button. There are three of these buttons like this. They'll just pull out nice and easy once I release the tabs. This just pulls back and it unclips. I have no idea what this is. It looks like sawdust, but grosser and finer. So not my finest moment. Sometimes when I'm working on these and trying to film it, it requires my arms to be at funny angles. And in this case, I accidentally broke that. Whereas I don't think I normally would have if I hadn't been filming. So I'm going to take this off, clean this with a little bit of isopropyl alcohol apply a little bit of super glue a little bit too much there so i'm going to use this spare straw that i have sitting here to move some of it to that side close it up hold it for a little bit we'll be good to go look at this hairball attached to the screw that's gross i can see some rust back there Want to be careful of these wires. Careful pulling these out as well. I'm a little nervous about this rust right here. I hope that it isn't affecting any of the circuitry. If it's just localized to the metal, we'll probably just brush it off as much as we can and leave it. And then most importantly, not put water inside of the system again. That just pulls up and off. It's attached a little bit by a connector, so it'll give a little bit of resistance, but it's, it just pulls off. That actually looks pretty clean. This little gate needs to be pulled out. The black part, just pull it straight out away. And then the orange cable should be able to pull out just like that. I want to be very careful using these pliers inside of here, not to accidentally scrape or damage the board. There we go. This a clip right here that we need to push back. That allows the board to release, but we also need to be careful still when moving it off to get it around this pin right there that it's down on. 
as I'm taking this out, I'm thinking I probably should just unplug it and not risk tearing it. There's some clips that just need to be clipped. Put a pry tool behind there and release them. And while keeping pressure up on this metal plate, then we should be able to lift it off. This is the tricky one. We got it. Three more clips that I need to wiggle around. Fortunately with this, there's a little wiggle room. This is meant to be a little bit shock absorbent. And so there's a little bit of wiggle room where I can just move it to get around those clips. kind of maneuver this spinner. There we go. Here is the actual laser. I have a replacement part for this if I need it because the laser wasn't working, but there's another way we're gonna try to fix that first. I'm gonna try to take these pieces off here just so I have them free. If I replace the laser, I'll need to do that anyway. There it is. When I clean, I wanna be careful to make sure to leave this on there. There's some lubrication that's meant to keep that turning freely. a lot dirtier on this side. And pretty dusty down in there, but it looks okay, free from water damage. That's good. Compared to my last few restorations, this one is satisfying in how dirty it is. I hope it looks good when it's done. I'm just gonna use a dry cloth here to wipe the dust off of these metal parts. I don't wanna get them wet, especially with the rust that's already started to build up on some of them. I wanna be very careful with this Q-tip and a little bit of isopropyl alcohol. To just dab this lens off and try to make sure it's clean. This doesn't look as dirty in camera as it is. There. Look at that. See if I turn the Q-tip over.
There's a process called retro brighting that can be used to restore the original light gray color on these parts that have yellowed a little bit. I just have these two little pieces on this system that have done that. I'm not going to use that here. Uh, maybe I won't be using it at all in any of my videos for a number of reasons. Uh, it does look really cool and I love the videos that do that, but I want this channel to be a little bit more accessible and for it to be something that people feel like they can do without the need for too much of an elaborate setup. Just using a soft bristle toothbrush here. I love using this magic eraser to wipe the outside of these consoles. It just seems to do a really good job. It's kind of a struggle getting this toothbrush down in here. I might have to finish this with a Q-tip later. Let's get it put back together. A common problem for the GameCube is an inability for it to read the disc. In anticipation of that potential problem, I purchased another laser that could go inside of it. However, I probably did that a little too early because I did a little bit more research and I discovered that there is another way that this is commonly fixed. On this circuit board, there is a little adjuster that calibrates the intensity of the laser. So what I want to do here is use a multimeter and attach two different ends of the multimeter, one of them over here and the other one to the lower one of the nodules on this side. Flip this over here to the omega symbol. And now I can test the ohms. 325, okay. I'm gonna just adjust that up a little bit because I have had better luck in the high 400s. There we go. We're going to put this old original laser back in here and hope that just by adjusting the laser intensity on the circuit board that that'll fix our problem of it not reading the disc. push the gate back. There we go.
This is probably the trickiest part of the reassembly. Just getting this spring back in here in the right way and then we want to make sure I have it in here already. I want to make sure to lie it down in the right spot. I want to get that little tongue pushed down so that it's in the right spot. There we go. that on and I'll put it down in there there it's in the right spot feels good looks a lot better but the real test is does it work all right first thing's good that's gonna happen anytime you take it apart fully like that it's fine the big question is will it read the disc nice All right, now I get to celebrate by playing one of the best games ever. Seriously, if you've never played Thousand Year Door. All right, thanks for staying with me for the journey. See you next time.